Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Guess who's back? Happy Friday, beloved. Happy, happy, happy Friday. I feel so much better. Yesterday, I went and got a shot. <laughs> and I start my antibiotics today. It's not COVID. It's not the flu. They didn't, they couldn't tell me what it was, but they treated me for something. But, oh, I feel so much better today. So I'm so glad to be here with you all. I felt so bad for having to play videos and not being able to talk to you all for the last couple of days. But thank you for staying with us. Thank you for not leaving. And I pray that those sermons were a blessing to you on yesterday and on Wednesday. But I'm back. I am back. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, 
Christy, a good morning, Mama Sonia. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Mama Nancy. Good morning, Cousin Sandra. Y'all spread the word that Hendo is back. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to pray and then get into praise and worship. Father God, we thank you, Lord. God, I'm so grateful this morning. God, many times we take stuff for granted, such as being able to talk. God, being able to share with others. God, I thank you for the platforms and the resources, God, that still allow us to get your word and your work through. But God, I thank you for healing me now. God, I thank you for it. God, and as you are healing me, God, I thank you for continuously healing those on the timeline who stand in the need of a blessing. Now, God, make this what you would have it to be on this morning. God, we remove our will and God, we follow your will and your plan this morning. God, bless those that are on the line this morning. Bless those that are on their way. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Miss Benita. Let's worship God in the beauty of holiness.
Lord, help me to hold out until my change comes. Sometimes we don't like the waiting process. We want God to move suddenly. And sometimes he will. But sometimes the Lord has to delay so we can fully lean in the pen and trust on him. So that's going to be our prayer. Lord, until my change comes, help me not to give up. Help me not to turn my back on you, Lord. Because sometimes we do that. Well, maybe the Lord don't want it. Or maybe God is mad at me. I'm preaching already. But we got to ask the Lord to help us to hold out. Stop making impulse decisions on our own. Not to be like Abram and Sarai when they was holding out on a baby, waiting on God to move. And Abram and Sarah had put the plan together for him to sleep with Hagar. And we see what happened all these years later because they couldn't uh, hold out and wait on God. I'm going to wait on Jesus. Stay right, stay, stand right still and study myself. I'm going to wait on Jesus. I can't do nothing till he come. I mean, I can, but it ain't going to be right. You got to wait on Jesus. So, Lord, help me to hold out. All right, let us pray and get ready to jump into chapter six. We're only going to do chapter six for one day, but I think it's going to be good. Lord, our Father, we thank you this morning for for your anointing power to do what you have called us to do. Now, Father, I pray, God, that we will finally make that step to make a change. God, that you are going to supernaturally turn our situations around. God, help us to learn how to be still and just wait on you. God, as the psalmist said, God of peoples, you may not come when you want you, but Lord, you're always right on time. And so now we thank you. We give you the glory and the praise. God, open our eyes to see your word. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Not my words, but your words. Not my will, but your will. Give me clarity of thought and speech. Less of me, none of me. More of you and all of you. We ask these and all of the blessings. In Jesus' name we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're jumping into chapter six today. And this is going to be good. Why do I always feel like too much or never enough? Always feel like too much or never enough. I'm going to poll you this morning. Which category do you fit in? And you might be in both, but which one is more dominant? Do you always feel like you're too much or do you always feel like you're never enough? And I'm going to approach this from two different angles. So stay with me. I'm going to talk about myself as well. Why? Because these are confessions of a crappy Christian. (laughs) I can't leave myself out of this. Which one do you feel like as of today? Do you always feel like too much or never enough? And I'm going to wrap this thing up in such of a nutshell today for us. We're going to all walk away with freedom. Let's see what we got. Never enough. Never enough. Okay. Who else? What we got this morning? Today's going to be a good conversation. I'm ready for it.
never enough. Okay. Got another never enough. What else? The question is, do you feel like you're always too much or never enough? So we're waiting to see how everyone feels this morning. Do you feel like you're too much or never enough? Okay, too much. Okay, so from what I got so far, so for my never enough crowd, that's where I currently am in my life. Um, And I'm going to tell you why. I feel like I'm never enough because sometimes I feel like I'm not good enough. I shared this with my students on, um, on the bus when we left church Sunday. Uh, we got to go sing at Bishop Albert Jameson's church, who is the uh, pastor of the Pleasant Grove Tabernacle Church in Brooklyn. He's also the chairman of the board for the Gospel Music Workshop of America. So he is somebody. <laughs> and so, of course, we didn't have a musician in New York. So I played the first song because uh, his organist didn't know it. And his organist knew the second song, so he played that. So when we finished, of course, Bishop Jameson... Uh, hugged me, thanked us, and uh, talked about Birmingham. And so as we were sitting there, when Bishop got ready to start hooping, and then they went into a praise break, the organist invited me up on the keyboard to play along with him. And so I was like, oh, Lord, he must have heard something that he enjoyed, because I'm an old school keyboardist. I don't know these new chords and stuff. I'm young, but my playing is old, Jesus. So we play in, and we're going through, and uh, we finished the shout break, and he leans over. He said, man, you got them old school chops. He's talking about, you don't hear much of that no more. And so I was like, oh, he enjoyed it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we still going through. So for the offering, he pulls out, I can go to God in prayer. And so I did my little thing, you know, just trying to keep it simple, not trying to overdo it. And Bishop turns around. He said, boy, you keep playing like that. We're not going to let you go. They're going to look for a new musical director down there at your college and that gave me such a confidence boost to hear my chairman my bishop of gmwa compliment my playing skills and it was in that moment that finally solidified me as a musician now people have been telling me boy you can play all your life and that's people who have known me (laughs) and while i do value and honor their opinion Sometimes it takes a stranger, somebody that doesn't really know you and somebody that you know (laughs) knows music to really let it sink in. You know, sometimes people can encourage you just to keep you you going and, you know, because they don't want to hurt your feelings. But I know Bishop. (laughs) I I know Bishop. Bishop ain't going to just encourage no foolishness. And that gave me the confidence that I needed to be comfortable in my playing. Now, granted, I love the gift that God gave me, but I only share it with my local folks. (laughs) I don't volunteer to play everywhere. I don't. Now, singing and directing a choir, I can do that all day, but playing an instrument, I like to keep that to myself, which many people don't know. (laughs) Um, Now, I used to feel like too much, Because I felt like never enough, I tried to overcompensate myself to be able to fit in, not realizing that God had the right crowds for me. You can compromise yourself in being too much to fit into a place where God never wanted you to fit in in the first place. 
And so you'll drain yourself feeling like too much because you you have become something that you should not be. I tell people I'm quiet and I'm very shy. People still don't believe that. I only open up to people who come to me. If you approach me and you approach me mannerable and you approach me with a good heart, then that switch turns on and Hendo comes out. But if I got to be the first one to make the move, maybe you'll be waiting to the rapture. Because I learned that when I was too much, not that I was putting myself into bad places or getting into the wrong crowds necessarily, but it wasn't the crowd for me. And I'm not saying that's the case for everybody. I'm just talking about myself this morning. I will preach you say, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> but watch this. Let me give y'all a secret this morning. God made you just the way you are. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so sometimes we feel like too much or never enough, but we need to check our standard. Are you all that God says you are? Check it out. Are you all that God says that you are? Now, we won't be 100%, but if you follow the model that God laid out before you, we'll be okay. And I'm going to say this, and this is just my personal, again, I'm saying this is my personal belief on the matter and on the situation. This is my personal opinion. It's 2024. Yes, there are some things that need to stay the same as far as roles and society. But society is evolving. And we should learn how to evolve when it becomes to men and women. Um, One of our former employees of Lawson passed away. Beautiful lady. Kind spirit, sweet lady. I never met her, but I heard plenty of stories about her last week um, before I left to go to New York. And as I'm looking at her, I'm saying, oh, I wonder what did she do? I wonder what she did. She was a plumbing instructor. Now, how often do you hear of a lady being a plumbing instructor? Till she finally became the dean of the career technical program at law beautiful lady would have never guessed that she was a plumbing instructor why do i say that she did her god-given talent and ability now in the household who's supposed to do the plumbing the man and in the household who's supposed to do the cooking the woman if we're going by traditional standards here but both of our chefs at lawson are men our chef instructors are men. <laughs> Teaching men and women how to cook and be chefs, be all that they can be. Now, I haven't encountered a male home ec teacher. I've always had women in my life, but I would love, I would love to see a, um, a male home ec teacher teaching about sewing and things that's what i mean by not letting things define who we are each and every one of us has a unique gift and talent some of us weren't made to and i'm gonna say it some men weren't made to do manual labor they didn't grow up with it If it wasn't instilled into them as a young man, some of them only did it to fit in and quickly realized it wasn't for them. Here's when I knew cutting the grass wasn't for me. This is when I knew it. I never desired to push a lawnmower. When my daddy got to ride a lawnmower, that's when I checked in. But see, there's an art and a skill to cutting grass because you can cut it the wrong way and your yard will be messed up. I feel like I cut the grass till all you saw was the soil. (laughs) 
And so people feel like I'm too much. Here's why. Because A.G. Gaston said something. I heard this quote when I was in high school. And I prayed about it. Do you hear me? I prayed about it. A.G. Gaston said, although uh, he had his doctorate, I don't know whether it was honorary or earned, I had to go back and research. He said, I don't know it all. So I hire people who do in their specific fields to get the job done. Now, granted, he was talking about um, for a company, but I applied that. Um, I applied that to my life. How so? God gave us professionals in every area. And if I'm not gifted in that area, I'm not doing it. Like most men know how to shave. The last time Bruce Wayne Henderson Jr. shaved his head out of town, I had to wear a band-aid on top of my head and in the back of my head to my church choir 60th anniversary. And I was shaving with a safe razor, not the straight razor. I had the little three-pronged razor and nick the top of my head because I did not follow my rule. My, thought, my rule is if there's a professional in the area, I am going to hire the professional. And unfortunately, I ran out of time and said, well, I can do it myself. My daddy does it all the time. And I learned quickly. It wasn't for me. So when it comes to anything with my head or hair, I go to a professional. Because I prayed, Lord, always put me in a place and a resource to be able to get things done. So that I can be who you call me to be. I don't feel like never enough because I can't cut grass. Watch this. Although I know how to change a tire and I know how to put my spare on. Guess what? AT&T gives me free roadside assistance. And nine times out of ten, whenever I get a flat or something like that, it's on a Sunday when I'm on my way to church or coming out of church. And got another event to go to and Really won't have time to go home and change clothes because I got dirty towel all over me. So since my roadside assistance is free through AT&T, I call and have a record pull up and change that sucker and then sign my name and AT&T pay for it. I know how to do it, but most of the time I'm not in a position to do it. I'm not dressed to do that. Um, and we live in a day and age where folks ain't going to stop to help you. Even with my home, I'm not home that often. And so I hire somebody to come and do a cleaning service on my house. Now, every time they get here, they say it ain't bad, but I know what I'm looking at. So I hate to see the houses they clean on the regular. Why? Because I prayed and asked God to put me in a position to hire professionals to do certain things. Now, don't get me wrong. Every now and then, I get in here, and when I got time, I'll get down and I'll get down. For the most part, those of you who know me, I'm on the go. But I don't mind saying that God gives me the resources to do that. He has blessed me with a wonderful job that I can take care of. And the cleaning person comes once a month. I don't call them every week. They come once a month. And they're late for this month because they normally come around the first of the month. You be an authentic who, to who God made you, and you'll have peace with yourself. I go to sleep good every night. Because I'm not worried about the opinions of others. I'm not worried about what people think of me. People are going to always have opinions of me. They're going to always have opinions of you. But who does God say you are? If you see a young girl always around boys, what you think they're going to assume about her? That she passed. Maybe she grew up with a bunch of brothers. And she don't know how to hang around girls. Take me for instance. My family is 99% women. 99% women on both sides of my family. So I grew up around women. Most of my conversations sound like women conversations because that's what I grew up hearing. My grandmother did hair. She's my babysitter. 
So I was in the beauty shop with women all the time. So it was easier for me to make friends with women because that's what I learned. That's who I learned. I don't want to be a woman. I ain't trying to be a woman. Y'all can keep all that God gave y'all through Eve. I don't want none of that. God bless you. But it's easier for me to connect with women. Well, I know a little bit about sports. I've learned some things. But time I've seen watching a football game for two hours and talk about plays and stuff like that, that don't that don't interest me at all. Now I'll go watch a game live and in person and enjoy the whole thing. But time I sit down on the TV and y'all screaming and hollering and drunk getting mad, mm -mm, it ain't ever that deep for me. <laughs> I'm not knocking it now, cause to each his own. You be who you are, and I'm certainly be who I am. So what is the message for us today? Freeing them. You are who you are. Ask God to put you in the places of people who will allow you to be who you are where you will feel freedom and confidence. We, my former pastor, Tadara White, used to say this all the time. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. He used to remind us of that. You're not everybody's cup of tea. So don't allow everybody to drink from you. Uh, one of my former choir members, uh, her name is Sherry. She stood up in church one time and gave her testimony. Um, how she knows she's a, a lot to handle, but she thanks God for the people who do deal with her. She was a great woman. Great woman. But we have to learn how to accept people for who they are. Unless it's detrimental to them and others. She's a laugher. She's a kind spirit. She's a ball of energy. You can't get upset with Sherry. That's who she is. <laughs> she brings the joy to the room. She brings the laughter to the room. <laughs> she makes jokes. You can't take them serious. That's her personality. So now, today, it is my prayer that you will seek God and ask Him, am I all that you have desired for me to be? Or am I doing more than what you call me to do? And you will soon quickly discover what it is that can either free you up or fill you up. One of the two. As you go through the chapter, if you read the chapter, there's some other things that the author gave to us about herself. But I had to give you what the Holy Spirit gave me this morning to help free us up. Now, there are times we can be too much and not in a good way. And then there are times we feel like we're never enough because we don't equate to the standard set by man and not the standard set by God. It's not hard to live for God. It's not. We make it complicated. Because we're trying to follow the Ten Commandments. We're trying to follow the deeds, the dows, the dance, the chants. 
And in this junction of our life, he gave us one commandment, to love. I promise you, if you love yourself and you love others, it'll stop you from doing a lot of stuff. I was having a conversation with a young man yesterday um, about a situation. And the situation ain't a good situation, but he said something in our conversation that showed me that he had a good heart and that he wanted to do the right thing in the situation. And I applaud him for that so much. If you just learn how to love yourself and love others, it'll stop you from doing a whole bunch of wrong. And when I say love yourself, love yourself so much that you want to be better, that you want to do better. (laughs) Some of us love ourselves to death. Where we think exactly of who we are is what God wants us to be. when it's detrimental to our well-being and the well-being of others. So today, walk in freedom. I've held y'all too long this morning. Walk in freedom. Walk in love. I pray that you got something out of today. I really do. Hope this will strike change in your heart, in your mind, and in your life. And that today will be the first day of freedom for your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. And Father, I thank you for those under the sound of my voice this morning. God, that you are making them better. God, that you are changing their heart and their mind God, to where they know they are enough in you. God, that you are all that you have called them to be. You have designed them. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. So God, help us to know better and to do better. God, go with us now as we go through the weekend. Keep us in your care until we shall all come back together on Monday morning. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. And we give your name the honor. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I love you guys, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. See you on Monday. Here's our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen.